Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. If you're first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I have a 2004 Dodge Ram. Uh, I think it's a 2500 with a 5.9 Cummins. Uh, customers stated they were driving, they hit a big, like a foot of water, uh, and then all of a sudden it was stalling, and then once they turned it off, they restarted it and it was able to start, but the check engine light was on. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this. So let's scan it and see what we got. All right, so we got the Top Don uh, Phoenix Light 2 here. We're going to go ahead and turn this on. Now, uh, earlier uh, earlier models, it does not support uh, auto, auto VIN. So we're going to go ahead and just go to scan. And we're going to go to, forgive me, I'm looking through my phone. We're going to go to American. We're going to go, actually, let's just, let's just try auto scan. And because that way it'll, it'll give us the option to enter the VIN. Let me get this entered. So here we have the VIN. It's a 2004 Dodge Ram. We're going to go scan. And it's going to bring up the topology of all the vehicle, the of uh, all the modules on the vehicle. We're not going to be doing a system scan because I've already scanned this um, before I pulled it in. I like to scan vehicles before I pull them in in case there's some sort of data that I need from a first start. Uh, so I, that's why I always scan them in the parking lot before I pull them in. Sometimes it's a misfire. Sometimes it's whatever. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We're going to go ahead and just enter the PCM. We had some torrential downpours over the weekend. And uh, we had quite a bit of flooding. So this is the, the only vehicle that's come in that hit water and had a problem. Usually we have uh, usually we have two anywhere from two to four vehicles that get towed in uh, where it hit a puddle of water and it hydro locked the motor. All right, so there we go. Fuel pump control circuit low. So we're going to go test for this. Uh, there's no freeze frame. Freeze frame doesn't matter for this code anyways. This is a coming. So this is talking about the lift pump, the transfer pump. So the lift pump is back here. So here's the fuel filter housing. And then there's a connector sticking directly off the back. That's the connector for the lift pump. And it's got a line in and a line out. And that's what supplies fuel to the injection pump. So we're gonna go ahead and tap into this to make sure that uh, we're getting power and we have ground. Let me set it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna actuate it first. And we're going to see if we can hear it run uh, only because I'm very familiar with this. So I know what it's supposed to do. So we're going to hit start. And now that it says stop here, that means it's running. Now the lift pump, you should be able to hear it and we do not hear it, which means it's not working. Okay. So now let me set up how I'm going to test for this. So you can see the light bulb turning on and turning off. That's the power getting pulsed. Uh, we are on here. You see how it says stop here. That means it's in actuation. Uh, so what I did was, so we'll go ahead and stop that. So let me show you the tool I made, but basically all I did was disconnect the connector and I have the ground side on the ground side of the light bulb here. And then I have the power side on the power side here. And with this light bulb, not only are we testing to make sure that we have power and ground, but that we also can carry a load and it's able to light the light bulb. You can have one strand of wire and have power, but you can't have one strand of wire and light an entire light bulb because amperage can't flow. So now you can see that orange part of the connector there. Uh, that is the connector for the lift pump. So I know that since I can't hear the lift pump running and I put my hand on it and I can't feel it running, I know that by testing it and lighting up this light bulb that the transfer pump has failed. It's a common problem. One of the things you have to be careful of with a lift pump on a Cummins is uh, I'll tell you a story about what happened to me. The first time I ever got a Cummins, uh, I didn't even know how to work on diesels. And I had one that would stall when it got hot and it had a lift pump code. Tested the lift pump, it failed, it wasn't working at all. I replaced the lift pump, I went to go drive it. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I did the TSB, which was not to replace the lift pump. It was to, uh, it tested it, it failed. It was to remove it, put this block on, uh, drop the tank, change the tank and the pump. So the pump in the tank became the lift pump. Got all done with that, which was the manufacturer's flow chart. Got all done with that and it still stalled when it got hot and it turned out that what happened is, so what happens on the Cummins is that the lift pump fails. The lift pump supplies the injection pump with fuel. Well, that fuel is also lubrication. So what happens is when that lift pump doesn't provide the injection pump with fuel, it doesn't have any lubrication on the inside. So the, so the injection pump mauls itself out in, internally. Uh, but the, what the reason that it can run when it's cold is because the injection pump creates a vacuum. It's able to pull fuel from the tank and run that way. And so what I'm going to recommend is replacing the lift pump and rechecking the injection pump because the injection pump could have been damaged. And then therefore it would need an injection pump as well. So let's get this sold and I'm going to show you how to replace this lift pump. They used to not be available but I just replaced one not that long ago. All right, I got this set up, so hopefully you can uh, watch me do this. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, so this is what our transfer pump looks like, like this. Looks like we're gonna have four bolts. Got a fuel line in the bottom, okay. Connector up top, right there. And there's gonna be an O-ring right there. Uh, first thing we need to do is drain the, the fuel out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and stick a bucket under there and uh and flip the lever to drain some fuel and then pull out the fuel filter cap fuel filter cap is 29 millimeter uh, carbine tools five millimeter Hex is what we're going to use for these bolts. Get you some of these little grippy uh, bolt containers. Look like this. They're magnetic. Put your bolts in. So right here, I'm just going to take out the four bolts. We're going to leave the fuel line attached and then remove it and then detach the fuel line and the O-ring at the top. Don't forget to get the O-ring out of the fuel filter housing. And it's attached with an O-ring, so it's gonna kind of pop off. There's four bolts. Okay, there we go. And there's your O-ring right there. So they give you another hose. They also give you a quick connect fitting like this and some clamps. I'm gonna try not to replace the hose because I really don't wanna mess with the other end of it. And there's your O-ring. O-ring goes on here. Make sure you lube it up. So this is a fuel injection clamp right here. It's not a worm drive clamp. So it seals all the way around the, the hose. So we're gonna have to go ahead and put the lift pump on, tighten the clamp, and then attach it. So don't put your O-ring on until after you put the hose on and tighten the clamp. Because you don't wanna lose it or get it dirty. Use some Sil Glide like that for your O-ring. So we're gonna put the O-ring on there like that. We're gonna lube it up. Just a little bit, you don't want too much. There 
and I have too much, but it's all right. Now we got to get it in the hole. Got it in the hole. All right, those are all snug. Now I like to go back and just double check. Easier to do it now than it is later. If you have a fuel leak, okay. There's that one. Now we got the last one. The bottom one here. We're gonna go ahead and just give that a little, a little snugness. So there's that. Now we need to grab the connector. Plug the connector in. So that's all good to go. Now let's get the fuel filter ready. All right, got a new fuel filter on there. Got the O-ring nice and lubed up. Can't really see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and slide this puppy in here. Okay, this is much easier than the newer style. The newer style, you gotta have a pry bar to pop it out of the out of the housing. All right, so I'm gonna use my little beefy ratchet for this. I got this snap-on ratchet. This thing is only like maybe six, eight inches long. There's the handle. It's got a flex head to it. There it is, just gonna snug this up and then give it a tiny little ugga dugga. Okay, one more. All right. All right, last little step. Let's just take a rag here. Luckily, uh, we didn't make much of a mess on this one, so that's pretty good. We're all cleaned up. Now let's go inside and get ready to uh, prime it, clear the code, and get started. All right, so now I'm gonna put the camera next to the Hopefully that's showing up in the audio. So now that we know the lift pump is operating, let's get ready to clear the codes and start it. All right. We're gonna go ahead and clear the fault code. All right, code's cleared. So one thing to remember is I had said before that we didn't hear it running and just now I said uh, we can hear it running and I put the phone next to it so you can hear it. Now one disclaimer I wanna make to you is the last one that I had, the pump did turn on and you could hear it. It was really loud and it sounded nasty. So you knew just by hearing it run, not only did it have power and ground, but that the pump was no good uh, just based on hearing it run. Be like, also, one other thing is, if you don't have a scan tool, if you can't actuate the lift pump, if you don't have access to bi-directional controls, an easy way to test this is the lift pump operates for 30 seconds when you bump the starter. So get in the car, get all your stuff hooked up, and bump the starter. And then you can check for your power and ground that way, or check for the pump to be running. That's how you'll know if it runs. It'll run for 30 seconds, and then it will turn off. So now let's get ready to start this thing. All right, so now another thing I like to do is because sometimes weird stuff happens, I like to just double check that there's no DTCs. Some vehicles require uh, the key to turn off and things like that, and the code will still be there. 
All right, so there's a little lovely Dodge logo. Okay. All right, now we're running. And we'll just do a quick double check one more time. Okay. No DTCs. Now we're gonna drive it, make sure it's all good. Now that we got this thing figured out, showed you how to do this lift pump, it's not super hard and it's serviceable. Now there was a TSB at one time that said to uh, remove the lift pump, put a block off plate or put a block plate that just transfer the fuel lines, drop the tank, all that. I have not found that TSB anymore and now lift pumps are available. But for a long time, the lift pumps were not available. So thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. See you next time.